Hello, hello, this is Sarah and we are playing Creativerse Gone Wired. This video is part of a series of step-by-step -step tutorials that assume no previous experience with circuitry, virtual or otherwise. In our last two videos, we spent time with the operations of the logic gate and familiarized ourselves with the concept of gate delay. In this video, we'll look at the number comparison gate as an event handler. I'll have a special assignment at the end of the video. When talking about the state of wireable blocks in these videos, I've often used several pairs of terms. True, false, on, off, open, and closed. In real-world circuits, some of these words are more appropriate in some contexts and incorrect in others, but within Creativeverse, they are interchangeable. A switch that outputs a true signal can turn a light on or open a door. A pressure plate that outputs a false signal can turn a beacon off or close a gate. One pair of terms that I haven't yet used is one and zero. In a manner of speaking, these are the two numbers that computers use to count and calculate. One is the representation of a true signal and zero a false one. Understanding true as one and false as zero will help us better understand the number comparison gate, which I will from here on call simply the comparator. When we place and inspect the comparator, we see it has two inputs, an output and a selection of six different operations. It looks like the logic gate, but does it behave like one? To understand how each operation of the logic gate worked, we checked every combination of inputs to see what the outputs would be, and in writing those down, we made truth tables that we can use for reference. Let's do the same thing with the comparator. We'll hook up our comparator to two switches and an LED. We'll connect our first switch to input 1 and our second switch to input 2. With two switches, each outputting either a true or false signal, we have four possible combinations. Both switches outputting false, the switch to output one false, and the switch to input two true, the switch to input one true, and the switch to input two false, and finally, both switches outputting true. Just as with our logic gate, we'll check the results for each combination and for each operation. However, this time, I'll use the terms 1 and 0, making our four possible combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Now we're ready to see what kind of behavior the comparator exhibits for each. Do you remember true-false problems in school? We were given a statement and asked to determine if the statement was correct or incorrect and then to indicate it by circling our answer. The comparator works like one of these problems, where it's presented with two inputs and the relational operation that acts between them. The statement it determines as true or false is input 1 has some relation to input 2. What that relation is depends on which operation we choose. The default operation for the comparator is equals, shown by the equal sign in the dialog window and on the information pane of our wiring tool as EQ. Let's answer these true-false problems. 0 equals 0. This is true. 0 equals 1. Philosophical arguments aside, this is false. Same thing for 1 equals 0. Finally, 1 equals 1 is true. When we test it with our two switch setup, we get the results we expect. 0, 0 outputs 1, 0, 1 outputs 0, 1, 0 outputs 0, and 1, 1 outputs 1. This set of results should also look very familiar to those of us working on the logic gate's XNOR operation. In fact, we can use the same rule to remember how the comparator's equal operation behaves. For the output to be true, both inputs must be the same. 
The second operation is not equals, shown in the dialog box as a bang or exclamation point followed by an equal sign, and on the information pane of our wiring tool as any Q. The bang, like the letter N, here indicates negation or inversion. You may have seen it in mathematics classes like this. Since this is an inversion of the equals operation, we can easily guess the results and identify its twin in the logic gate as well. As with the equals operation, we can carry our rule over from the gate. For the output to be true, one and only one input must be true. From here on, our results get more interesting. The next operation is less than, which uses the classic less than symbol in the dialog window and LT in our information pane. Looking at our input possibilities as numbers, the question we want to answer is, when is input 1 less than input 2? A number is not less than itself, and 1 is not less than 0, so that leaves only our second combination, 0, 1. Here our rule is very specific. The less than comparator outputs true only when input 1 is false and input 2 is true. For now, let's skip the fourth operation and look at the fifth operation, greater than, shown in the dialog window as the classic greater than symbol and in our information pane as GT. When is input 1 greater than input 2? A number is not greater than itself, and 0 is not greater than 1, so that leaves our third combination, 1, 0. Our rule is the vice versa of what we saw with less than. The greater than comparator outputs true only when input 1 is true and input 2 is false. Backing up to the fourth operation, the less than comparison is depicted in the dialog window as a less than symbol followed by an equal sign and on the information pane as LTE. The more familiar mathematical form is this. Let's jump into testing it and see what results we get. Does this make sense? We can look at each combination of inputs as true-false problems with the statement input 1 is less than or equal to input 2. Or we can think of it as a special combination of machines we already know. Imagine a less than comparator and an equals comparator hooked up to an OR logic gate. If the two comparators shared switches, what would the OR's outputs be? The outputs for the comparators are the inputs for the OR gate. When the original switches are 0, 0, the equals comparator outputs true. Since any true input will output true on the OR gate, the final result there is also true. For 0, 1, the less than comparator outputs true, and this is the only time it does so. The OR gate is happy with any true input, so it outputs true again. When the original inputs to the comparators are 1, 0, however, neither the less than comparator nor the equals comparator output true, so the OR gate responds with a false output. Finally, 0, 0 outputs true on the equals comparator, so the OR does as well. Our final results show a familiar pattern. The third result is different from the others. Didn't we just see an operation whose third combination result was different? The greater than comparator also differs only on its third result, though in the opposite way as the less than or equals comparator. However, if we put an inverter after our greater than comparator, our results would match perfectly. The less than or equal to comparator is the inverse of the greater than comparator. We can frame our rule accordingly to this inverse property and say the less than or equal to comparator outputs true any time except when input 1 is true and input 2 is false. Knowing what we know now about the less than or equal to comparator, can you predict the results for the last operation, greater than or equals, 
shown in our dialog window as a greater than sign followed by an equal sign, and on our information pane as GTE. Just as less than or equals is an inverse of greater than, the greater than or equals comparator is an inverse of the less than comparator, so that all results are true except for the second one. Again, we'll frame our behavioral rule as an inverse. The greater than or equal to comparator outputs true any time except when input 1 is false and input 2 is true. Now that we've exhausted testing the individual operations, we have a full complement of truth tables for our reference. The logic gate has six operations with six different results. The number comparator also has six operations, but only four are different from those of the logic gate. The logic gate's XOR and the comparator's not equal operations are the same. Likewise, the logic gate's XNOR and the comparator's equals operations are the same, so both gates can be used for these functions. Each operation also has an inverse, which gives the same results as if we placed an inverter after the gate. Now that we have some tables to reference for outputs that we need or outputs that we desire, I have a little assignment for you. Over here I have two switches. One switch for input 1, one switch for input 2. I have four blank spaces and four LEDs. And four signs with what I would like to have happen. Each of these LEDs is already colored. And I'd like you to connect the switches to a gate. It's a gate of your choice, either the logic gate or the number comparator, and you'll have to choose which operation works best for the situation. This switch should connect to input 1 of every single gate, all four. This switch should connect to input 2 of all your gates, and then of course all your gates will connect to the LEDs. I would like you to set this up so that when both switches are off, the red LED lights up. When input 1 is off but input 2 is on, this LED lights up. When it's vice versa and the input 1 switch is turned on but the input 2 switch is turned off, I would like green to light up. And finally, when both switches are on, I would like the blue LED to light up. You'll need four gates they will be separate operations. I'll have the answer for you later this week, as well as part two of this video. So far, we've pretty much hashed out everything we can find out about the number comparison gate as an event handler. But you probably already know the number comparison gate as something that handles values. We'll be looking at that aspect of the number comparison gate and its companion, the number pad, next time. And until then, take care.